Oh, tanks are super OP right now because of Heart Steel and Titanic Hydra. Heart Steel is an excellent item for tanks because it provides you with bonus HP damage or bonus HP scaling damage and bonus HP stacking ability. So Cyan, who has the passive to stack HP by killing minions, can stack even more HP by damaging opponents. And Titanic Hydra is transforming all of your bonus HP into additional damage. Um, like, first of all, additional damage every 2.5 seconds, plus additional attack damage. So this is really, really good on Bruisers slash Dragonaus. Hey what's up guys, Darkwrecker here. In today's video we are gonna do the tier list for the new patch 5.0. We have a few changes. First of all we have the new champion Syndra getting released. Then we have Aurelion Soul rework, Gregor slight change, Lee Sin ultimate change and Zyra nerf. On top of that we have the new items. We have Spear of Shojin, which is disgustingly broken on Bruisers. Then Titanic Hydra, really good item for tanks and Bruisers. And Heart Steel, absolutely crazy on tanks like Dr. Mondo, Seth, Cyan. And if you guys want to know how the meta changed and uh, what's my opinion about the meta, then definitely stay tuned. I'm going to give you an in-depth explanation about all the changes and where I'm ranking each champion for each position. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And remember, this is just my personal opinion. And hopefully, you guys listen to my opinion. Because my opinion is superior. You guys have no idea. Okay, anyways. Um, we're going to start with the Baron lane. You guys might be wondering. Darkbreaker, stop putting Cyan. Pick off the patch. Now watch this. This is user Firmhold 8. He's using Tinder, man. Using the same uh, dog shit strategy, the inting strategy, running it down with a 98% win rate, 97% from Iron to Grandmaster. You run it down, you get boosted. You run it down, you get boosted by the system. Why? The matchmaking tries to get everyone to around 50% win rate, right? And how does the team maker work? The team maker works. Um, by balancing out the matchmaking rating. But this guy has really bad matchmaking rating because he has bad stats. He has zero KDA, he has no gold, he has no damage, no team fight particip uh, participation. So his stats or his uh, matchmaking rating is super super low. So therefore he's getting good teammates to compensate uh, his very bad matchmaking rating. But he's getting value by split, uh, split pushing. And KDA is such a big factor that you will always have a good bot lane while also still applying a split push pressure annoying the opponent. Uh, so you're getting some value done while getting good teammates that are boosting your ass. And Cyan is the biggest abuser uh, doing this. And Cyan also got buffed with Titanic Hydra and Heart Steel that make him having like 10,000 HP in the late game. Just absolutely running people down and no one can stop him. So... Uh, this strategy works even better with the new items because Cyan becomes super super tanky in the late game. Uh, that's why he's picked up the patch and I just want to show you guys this because he's using Trinamel doing the same uh, strategy. Because people claim, it's Cyan, Cyan is broken, oh my god, Cyan is broken, blah blah blah, split push is broken. No, the matchmaking system is broken. And I'm tired of fucking boosting people. I have 6 KDA, 60% win rate, and I have to carry every single game for very questionable beings. So, I want you guys to abuse this until Riot does something. They will not do anything anyways, but... I mean, anyway, someone has to say it because this matchmaking is disgusting and I feel like anyone who's trying to play the game, who's actually trying to perform good, will have the same experience where they will get bad teammates that they're supposed to carry, they have 1 KDA, they have negative, no, 1 KDA and 55% win rate and they're getting no turret damage, no nothing, no, 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 anything. Bam. Okay, anyways, enough talking about this, I just want to repeat myself. I know some people will say, you should stop talking about it. Someone has to talk about it. Stop being quiet. Don't accept bad quality. Anyways, let's move on. Pick up the patch. My man, Cyan, any tanks. So, tanks are getting super... Tanks are super OP right now because of Heart Steel and Titanic Hydra. Heart Steel is an excellent item for tanks because it provides you with bonus HP damage 
or bonus HP scaling damage and bonus HP stacking ability. So Cyan, who has the passive to stack HP by killing minions, can stack even more HP by damaging opponents. And Titanic Hydra is transforming all of your bonus HP into additional damage. Um, like, first of all, additional damage every 2.5 seconds, plus additional attack damage. So this is really, really good on Bruiser slash Dragonaus. Let's move on to Dr. Mondo. Dr. Mondo, HP stacking machine, kind of unkillable. If you guys are banning champions that do true damage, Dr. Mundo becomes unkillable with a new, two new items and Titanic Hydra is so good on Dr. Mundo as well, especially in combination with a third ability uh, that is scaling with attack damage. So Dr. Mundo becoming super tanky and doing tons of damage. Same for Seth. That is a Juggernaut and the explanation for Juggernauts are that they are super tanky while still doing a lot of damage and he has a lot of crowd control on top of that. Aatrox is also really good and Aatrox can also use Titanic Hydra and Shoujin. For you guys who are not aware how Shoujin works. Shoujin, when you're using your ultimate, you're boosting yourself, getting 30% movement speed for 6 seconds. And also all of your abilities are getting reduced. The cooldown is getting reduced. And if you kill someone, the duration of the buff is getting extended by 6 seconds. So this is really insane for almost every bruiser. Also good on champions like Akali or on Katarina because they have AD scaling as well. So on them, Shojin works like a charm as well. I should make Akali Shojin content as well. I need to remember that one. I forgot. Akali video. Um, and Gregor's. Tank Gregor's video. Uh, Garen also... I mean, it's very obvious. I don't need to explain it. Hearthia and Titanic Hydro are very good on tanks. And Garon becoming very tanky while still doing a lot of damage. Camille is very good on this patch. Camille, Fiora and Gwen are super good in the Baron lane right now. Because they are one of the few champions that can, can, that can counter tanks because of their true damage. And their max HP percentage damage scaling. Fiora is vital do a lot of damage they are scaling with the maximum hp of the opponent so the more uh the more hp the opponents have the more damage fiora will do and shojin on fiora shojin on camille they are really good uh because of the movement speed you're getting and uh, because of the cooldown reduction you're getting camille obviously very good uh, bruiser split pusher with true damage same for gwen hyper carry with true damage and same for fiora why am I putting Fiora up even though I don't like her in teamfights? It's because she's one of the best counters against the meta right now because everyone is going to go for those tanky, beefy champions that are running hard steel or Titanic Hydra and Fiora with Divine Thunder, uh, Shoujin and Hellbreaker is going to absolutely demolish them and Blade of the Rune King obviously for the percentage damage. So Fiora is one of the best counters towards those champions. Remember that if you guys are facing Dr. Mundo, Cyan, Fiora is excellent to counter and destroy them. Gregor's, whether you're running him AP or with a tank build, I think Heartsteel and Titanic Hydra can be very good on Gregor's because he will do a lot of damage while being super tanky. Um, then Jax with Shoujin is really good. One of the best split pushers. Renekton with Shoujin is disgustingly broken as well. Um, one of the biggest issues of Renekton was him getting kited and Shoujin providing him 30% movement speed and also reducing the cooldowns while his second and third ability have high cooldown makes him so so good right now. You definitely need to try him out as well. Akali is one of the best assassins. I was kind of debating whether I'm putting her down. Not because she is getting weaker, but because she has kind of hard time against those tanky split pushers um, clearing the wave. Because how does... Akali deal with uh, Dr. Mundo or with Cyan or with a fat set. She can't do anything. So there, uh, there was my thought process. Hmm. Akali will struggle against those champions, denying or clearing the waves or even being able to kill them. Melford and On. Yes, Heart Steel is good on them, but I just feel like Baron Lane solo queue tanks. Now, you need champions that provide more value. Stalin has the split pushing. Dr. Mundo has way more damage. Like, he can carry team fights way better than... I mean, uh, I mean, obviously, Malfoy can land a good ultimate. But you're way more reliant on your teammates to follow up. 
I was debating whether I'm gonna put Malphite on into S plus tier as well. Because with hard tier they're really really good. But at the same time, tanks, pure tanks, pure tanks that only have crowd control, pure tanks with crowd control, they suck in solo queue. When your bot lane is shit, you will never win with those champions. That's why I'm like, mm, I think I just put them S tier. Even though they can be excellent, obviously. So Malphite and On are very good tanks with hard steel, providing a lot of crowd control and teamfight value. Jace. Um, yeah, I just feel like Jace is struggling against a lot of matchups um, that are tanky because he can't kill them. Obviously, he can hurt them in the early game, but later on he really can damage them and can't do anything against them. But he can be a good counter against some elite champions and has really good poking damage, but he falls off in the late game. Shen is also really good because of hard steel and titanic hydra on top of that you can use your ultimate to join team fight so it's a really really good pick uh then we have darius um darius is a juggernaut that is really good but he is not a typical tank that is i will i don't think you will ever use hard steel on darius I just don't think it fits his kit. Titanic Hydra can be very good on him though in the late game. But the biggest problem is his kite ability most of the time still. I'm thinking if you could run Shojin on uh, Darius. If you go jungle Darius with Shojin like Trinity, Trinity, uh, Death Dance, Shojin or like Xerox Gage. You're just running people down with your ultimate. 30% movement speed. I, I think Darius with Shojin uh, should be pretty good as well. Riven Shojin, very good, but I feel like she has a lot of hard matchups and she's better in the jungle. Uh, Vladimir is very scaling, but in the late game is a monster. Tank Yasuo is super strong and potentially you could run Titanic Hydra on a Yasuo as well. Uh, Yone in the Baron lane, super good, but very scaling. Uh, Aurelia, a very high skill level champion in the Baron lane. You need to learn the matchups. Wukong, I don't know why, but I thought Wukong... I mean, with Heart Steel or with uh, Titan Hydra would be super, super good. But I just feel like on this champion, I'm tending to lose. Even if I'm doing good on this champion, I'm tending to lose. Like, I land a nice ultimate, I'm just tending to lose. Because I can't carry as hard as on other champions. Which is surprising to me, because I used to win a lot of Wukong. Uh, yeah, but you guys can tell me if you guys feel the same way. Because I tend to lose a lot of Wukong, even when I'm doing good uh, recently. Akshan is an excellent counter in the Baron lane against range champions. Timo is also really good in the early game, uh, thanks to his range advantage and in the late game his shroom damage is insane. Diana with the ultimate, obviously very good. Cannon in the early game, laning phase is very strong, plus the ultimate in teamfight, super good. Uh, then we have Swain, Swain potentially with Hathi being able to stack up a lot of HP, uh, but he's a very scaling champion. Urgot is strong in the early game, falls off, but still provides decent value in teamfights. Pantheon very early game reliant, trying to snowball, uh, but obviously he's um, pretty strong in the early game and even in the mid game. Then Jarvan, super solid uh, bruiser that provides a lot of value in teamfights thanks to his knockup and thanks to his ultimate. Graves and Trindamay are super super scaling champions and they struggle against a lot of champions. I mean, basically, they need like three items to become useful. Stinged, very scaling out, uh, very scaling champion, but become he can become super strong in the late game when he can catch people with his fling and the second ability. Bane can be a very good counter in the Baron lane, but she's very easy to punish at the same time. Kale is super, super scaling and way too easy to counter. That's why I'm putting a C tier. But obviously, once she somehow reaches level 15, she can be good. Let's move on to the jungle tier list. For the jungle tier list, Karthix is obviously still the most broken jungler in the game. He is just an amazing assassin and you guys will say, Oh, but the tanks, Karthix will struggle against tanks. Karthix is still excellent against tanks when he's running Black Cleaver or Sterox Gage. He's really good at killing tanks or you could po potentially even run Shojin on him. Just going for more Bruiser orientated build. He is still pretty damn, uh, pretty damn good. Lee Sin also getting a massive buff on the ultimate. Uh, Lee Sin with the ultimate doing percentage, max HP percentage damage. So the ultimate is really good against tanks now. Kane, 
Kane with the meta changing towards tanks. Red Kane is going to become more popular since Red Kane is really good at killing tanks. Uh, thanks to the max percent uh, damage. Diana, in my opinion, is still one of the best assassins in the game thanks to her AOE. No, I mean, thanks to her teamfight potential, uh, her mobility, and her one shot potential. And you can even run a bruiser orientated build if you guys are facing more tanky compositions. Evelyn's, uh, Evelyn's solo queue with her stealth is just way too good. Then we have Gregor's. Gregor's getting buffed with being able to use his uh, barrel while dashing is pretty damn good. And he has really good poking damage. Dr. Mundo in the jungle, I put him S tier. He is really good right now with hard steel. Not necessarily hard steel in the jungle, but Titanic Hydra in the jungle, making him A tanky and still doing a lot of damage. Aatrox with Shojin is really strong as well. He's a strong bruiser with a lot of sustain and damage and knockups. Rhythm with Shojin also super strong. High mobility burst damage. Icarim with Shojin also working like a charm, um, giving him even more movement speed so he will do even more damage and reducing his cooldowns as well. Volivia is still a very good tank, good frontliner and really good at diving. Uh, Amumu, um, yeah, Amumu, Ramos and Nunu are really good tanks, providing a lot of value in teamfights with a crowd control. Ramos and Nunu being able to gank very early on and Amumu, Amumu having an insane ultimate in teamfights. Nautilus, whether you're running him AP or full tank, he provides a lot of crowd control and being an excellent frontliner, so he can be very good to uh, balance out the team composition. Shen can also be a very good tank in the jungle thanks to his taunt and the ultimate to join team fights. Olaf is going to become very good as well in this meta. Shoujin should be very good on him thanks to the movement speed you're getting. Um, yeah, he's very good against tanks because of his true damage and being able to ignore crowd control. Darius, I think Darius, Darius with Shoujin in the jungle could be a very nice pick because uh, he has good carry potential thanks to his ultimate and the sustain he has. Jarvan, I love Jarvan in the jungle. Um, Jarvan lethality just one-shotting everyone. Very good jungle pressure in the early game. He's super scaling, but his one-shot potential is unrivaled in the late game. Fiddlesticks with the ultimate is excellent in teamfights. Vi, really good jungler, super solid. The ultimate is really good to catch people. Wukong's ultimate is super, super good uh, to knock up everyone in teamfights. Sin Shao potentially can be a very good jungler as well with, with Shoujin. We will see. Um, obviously he's a strong bruiser, providing a lot of damage and is tanky at the same time. Yone is one of the strongest um, scaling champions in the game. Insane playmaking and insane damage. I think Morgana is also becoming more popular now in this meta in my opinion with Leandri. Being able to kite tanky champions and having that percentage damage against them. Renekton in the jungle obviously. Honestly. I think in the jungle you would run something like Yumu's Black Cleaver Shoujin running people down doing tons of damage. I think definitely viable. Um, Pantheon also very good early game jungler that has a lot of pressure on the map. Shivana, people have been telling me running uh, Shoujin, I mean not Shoujin, uh, hard steel on here, but I don't think you can stack that much that much on Shivana using uh, hard steel. I think Shoujin might be good on her. Yeah, Shoujin gives you more movement speed. Has good stats. And it lowers your cooldowns on your abilities as well. I mean, Shoujin works on every booster, honestly. I think Shoujin... Shoujin is probably the strongest item of the patch. Like, people don't understand the, how good the passive is. The passive is not... The passive is so good. Reducing your cooldowns while giving you 30% movement speed and if you kill someone you extend the duration by another 6 seconds every single time. And it has low cooldown as well. It's it's really really good. People underestimate. Like people are... Like, like me, let me explain to you guys. People are overrating hard steel. Hard steel has a cooldown of 20 seconds. And even if you're landing a nice combo on people you're getting like 50 HP. Because you're getting 10% of the damage you're doing with hard steel as bonus HP. And it scales with bonus HP. Same for Titanic Hydra. Scaling with bonus HP. 
because some people have no clue how to read and understand items telling me heart steel has to be first item no it's dog shit first item god damn it i feel like people can't read english people don't understand items like read this heart steel okay 20 seconds cooldown okay 20 seconds cooldown you have 120 base damage and you're getting 12 percent of the damage that you're doing 12 percent out of 120 and it's five percent of your bonus maximum hp it says five percent of your maximum hp no it's five percent of your bonus ma bonus hp Okay, let me read it. Maybe I'm trolling with a bonus HP. I swear to God. I swear to God, maybe I'm trolling. 5% of your max HP. Wait, let me read it. Maybe I'm, I feel like I'm trolling, maybe. Wait, let me read in-game really quick. Okay, I'm trolling. It's 5% of your max HP. But yeah, I mean, I, I mean it's still the same though. I'm trolling. It's not bonus HP, but 5% of your max HP. Do you understand? If you have 5% of your max HP in the early game, that's not a lot of... Titanic Hydro was bonus HP. I'm trolling. Titanic, Titanic Hydro was bonus HP. So it barely gives you damage. Like it skates with bonus HP, right? But it's the same for Hearty. Hearty skates with your maximum HP. But 5% of your maximum HP in the early game is negative like let's say in the early game you have like i don't know 1000 hp that's that's like 50 hp additional damage so 170 and then 12 percent of that only that's like you're barely stacking 15 hp or something or maybe 20 hp like every 20 seconds you get like 20 hp or something that's barely anything that's what i'm saying heart is way more effective if you're getting it like third third item or fourth item fourth third or fourth item like getting heartbreaker or one of your core items is way more beneficial for the early game for the trading than getting healthy early on where you can barely get any stacks but people don't understand it. five percent of your max hp is negative hp same for this uh titanic hydra three percent bonus hp and look at this gain attack damage equal to five plus 2.5 bonus hp so you're barely getting any attack damage in the early game from Titanic Hydra. So people are kind of overrating the items at the same time. Yes, they can be good, but you don't have to get them first item. Okay, where was I? Um, okay, let's move on to Camille. Camille, I think she is too scaling. Can be good though. Um, then we have Neela. Neela is... I mean, they budget her jungle clear. She's super scaling, but she can still be good in team fights. Um, Jay's jungle clear got butchered. Kale, very scaling, just very scaling. But I mean, in the jungle, she has a better time scaling, but in a late game, she will be insane. And then we have Graves. Graves is too scaling, in my opinion. Urgot in the early game strong, but he falls off. Lydia is too scaling. Gwen is too scaling. Same for Echo. They are too scaling. Um, but these champions are really good in the late game, by the way. If you guys need an AP champion, Gwen is really good against tanks. Um, Echo, a late game scaling, just one-shotting people. And Lydia is also very good uh, against tanks because of Liandris. Aurelia can be very good in the right hands, but hard to play. Fiora also very hard to play in team fights. Master Yi is kind of hit or miss. Renga hit or miss. So these guys are very snowball reliant. They can be good when they're snowballing, but they can also flop and be absolutely useless. Zed very high skill ceiling can be good to play. Pike very snowball reliant, uh, very similar to Lee Sin, just spam ganking, but super snowball reliant. Um, Twitch. His jungle is shit, but uh, what he can do is cheesing people with the early game stealth, trying to get kills and then snowball. And in the late game, he is a monster, but his jungle is very negative. Okay, this was just for fun. I'm going to remove it. Honestly, Jack's jungle, I've played it and it's pretty damn good. Um, his jungle here is kind of horrendous though, but I feel like Jack's is just so good with the children. Maybe I can put him eight here, I'm not going to lie um trinema is very scaling and warwick i just don't like warwick i just don't like warwick he's so bad in teamfights what can i say 
let's move on to mid lane mid lane pick of the patch i'm really not sure pick of the patch honestly i should put syndra just because syndra is the new champion syndra is the new champion pick of the patch oh my god let's hype her up honestly syndra is pretty damn good syndra is really good thanks to her kite ability like she has a very long range stun being able to poke people down and doing a lot of damage yeah, it actually makes sense to pick a put a pick of the patch just because she's the new champion and she's actually really really good. Um, wait, I wonder what's her win rate right now in China. No, it's not bad, fifty three percent win rate. <laughs> Let's look at this. <laughs> Our in some rework. Our in some rework. Look at this. The next one is just fifty percent, <laughs> and then it's already so. We're gonna talk about Our in in a bit. Oh look at this! <laughs> There's already in soul. Let's uh, let's uh, let's cover this really quickly. Already in soul C tier. The rework is absolutely dog shit in my opinion. Um, he just shits not good, and the win rate also explains it. Forty three percent win rate on already in soul right now. I feel like already in soul just needs to scale so so hard right now. He needs a lot of items and a lot of stacks. He can be good in the late game though, but he kind of becomes like a kale now. Late game can be good, but you guys can see 43% win rate on the Chinese server right now, which is bad. Cannon actually has 58. I should rank uh, Cannon higher. Where do I have him? I have him S tier. Okay, Vladimir. Vladimir, insane sustain god, late game monster. Jace, really good early game, super strong poking damage. Ari, insane assassin, high mobility. Akali, the super strong assassin as well. Lux. Uh, just provides a lot of utility with her shielding and her binding and while still doing a lot of poking damage Kasaline is one of the best late game damage champions with high mobility just one shotting everyone Katarina is one of the best solo queue champions in uh, Especially in lower ranks you get one reset you just kill the whole map and Shojin should be very good on Katarina as well You should try it out Corky has one of the best poking damage in the game and his package is absolutely godly in teamfights. Uh, Diana is obviously also very good in teamfights. Um, Yone, very strong in the 1 vs 1 and one of the best late game champions. Tang Yasuo is broken, uh, doing a lot of damage while being tanky and providing a lot of crawl control. Zed is one of the best uh, assassins, split pushers and really good at uh, killing people in the mid lane in the 1 vs 1. He kind of bullies most of the mid laners that are squishy. Aurelia also one of the best counters against squishy champions because she can just one shot them. Annie is excellent in teamfights thanks to her ultimate. Zyra got a massive nerf and I think she's only S tier now thanks to the nerfs. Uh, Timo is just disgusting with his playstyle in the late game just shrooming the whole map and you just ass uh, assassinate people. Then we have Akshan, one of the best mid laners in terms of laning phase and roam ability. And he is also super good in the late game. Twisted Fate, ultimate, roaming potential, macro control, very good. Uh, Karma providing really good poking damage and utility in teamfights. Zoe has really good poking damage. Swain has really good crowd control, is tanky and uh, scaled super well into the late game. Fizz kind of struggles in the early game, but in the late game, he is a really good assassin, just one-shotting people. Greg is, in my opinion, super solid and um, super solid and balanced uh, poking champion. Oriana, a very good poking champion as well. Vega kind of scaling, but his event horizon and his one-shot in the late game is super good. Then we have Galio. Galio is a champion that provides a lot of uh, poking damage and utility. Vex has the reset mechanic, has the fear mechanic, he's just, oh, she is just really good. Then we have Cannon. Cannon's ultimate is super good. I just feel like his landing phase is not that good in the mid lane and he struggles against a lot of champions that can just kill him. Then we have Lucian. Lucian high mobility, burst damage, ADC, super good in the mid lane. Especially in the early game, he can dominate a lot of uh, matches. I'm actually surprised that Ken has such a high win rate in uh, China, but this is in Diamond. Let's see in uh, top of Kenyon, like King. He's still pretty good win rate. Seraphine has high win rate as well in which, what is this? The Grandmaster. Okay, let's look Master. Ken has really high win rate. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't feel it. 
I mean, the thing is that this is like the average win rate across the board in Master Plus. Um, but it doesn't necessarily translate because, I mean, Cannon is also very easy to play. Like most of the times, champions that are harder to play like Assassins, like Akali or Karzix. Like imagine, Karzix got buffed because he has one of the lowest jungle win rates. Like champions that are hard to play have lower win rate because this is the win rate across like thousands of players that are playing them. Like I can show you jungle win rate for example. Jungle and diamond and I tell you Karzix is like one of the lowest. Or Lee Sin, like Lee Sin is one of the lowest. Karzix is actually higher now. Karzix used to be way lower before the buff. Like look at this, Lee Sin, Diana, like these champions have low win rates in diamond let's, let's check master really quick like these win rates don't necessarily translate uh into actual gameplay because it's just the average win rate across the board and a lot of times uh champions or oh, shivana is actually like 53 percent shivana is also easy to play morgana is easy to play a lot of times champions have good value in team fights and that are easy to play have higher win rates doesn't mean that they are the best necessary so um I wouldn't take too much emphasis towards like the average win rates but yeah canon obviously you just press the ultimate and you provide a lot of value in team fights that's why he has really high win rate like a lot of times like amumu amumu has high win rate just because you press one button and he's easy to play diamond plus master plus these players are in my opinion they are not that good even grandmasters, a lot of grandmasters are not that good. The matchmaking is inflating a lot of people that are not that good. And they are easy to play champions, automatically have higher win rates. So that's why I don't take these win rates not too seriously. And Aurelian saw, yes, his win rate is bad because he's way harder to play now. But he's probably not that bad. He can be pretty good when you know how to play him. He has high skill ceiling. He's very scaling. But honestly, I've seen Aurelian So doing pretty good work. He could be A tier, but I just put him C tier for the memes. <laughs> I just put him C tier for the memes. He's not that bad. But I just want to emphasize the win rate kinda. And that he's hard, hard to play and not as good as he used to be beforehand. He's way harder to play. Zix after the re after the rework he's honestly not that good anymore. I hate the rework on him. I hate I don't know his kit feels shit. His kit just feels sh shit. The bomb feels shit. The passive is so bad right now. The old passive was 100 times better for trading and even damaging the turrets. Gwen to scaling very easy to punish. Brand to immo to immobile I guess. But uh, can provide really good poking damage. Lilia is too scaling. Kale is too scaling. Morgana provides a lot of poking damage and crowd control, but her wave clear is not that good in the early game and she can't really roam. A lot of times, champions that can roam in the early game and that can snowball are better than champions that are too scaling and can't do anything or can impact the map. Pantheon, strong in the early game. The problem is she just falls off in the late game completely. Pike is. Very snowberry, snowberry line, and his wave clear is not that good. Garen is honestly S tier. Um, Garen with hard steel and Titanic Hydra is just super strong, and he's a very solid tank at the same time. Seraphine with the ultimate can be good, but her laning phase, her 1 vs 1 are just very bad. Her ultimate can be super, super good in team though. And like I said, Aurelian, so he can be good. I think he is too scaling and very hard to play. His win rate will probably get better once people get to know his kit. You can already tell his appearance rate is, uh, where was I? It was very high, it was like mid lane, diamond plus. He's getting picked a lot. He's getting picked a lot while he's not easy to play and therefore his win rate is also way worse. Let's see, pick rate of oh, 15%. Damn, he's popular. Arenzo is super popular actually, 70, uh, 17%. Anyways, let's move on to ADCs. ADCs, I love ADCs because ADC tier list is way shorter. There are way less champions. Pick of the patch, in my opinion, Kaiser is just busted. Kaiser always remains the best champion. Every Sovereign player or all the good ADC players that are pushing um, are using Kaiser. Kaiser is just busted, in my opinion. 
then we have Jin. Jin is also really strong. Um, Tristana, one of the best late game champions. Asria, one of the best late game champions. High mobility, really good poking damage. Then we have Corky, godly poking damage. The package is insane in team fights. The other S tier champions are contenders into S plus. To be honest, we have champions like uh, Varus and Silver that can definitely be S plus tier as well, in my opinion. But I just put them S tier. I just feel like. I just feel like they lack the mobility. They are in solo queue, it's easier to punish them. Caitlyn, super solid ADC, high range, uh, strong across the board. Draven, absolutely, uh, absolute monster in the early game, just bullying people. Sire, super consistent champion. Silver is excellent in team fights. Varus is really good thanks to his poking damage. Samira and Nila are kind of all in champions. Um, Samira with a reset mechanic and Nila jumping in just uh, doing tons of damage. Misfortune with her ultimate is really good and her, and her, and her early game is super strong. Ash, honestly her damage is pretty good. She provides a lot of utility thanks to her uh, slow, her poke and then the ultimate to catch people. Then we have the super strong late game champions but they are very scaling and weak in the early game vayne jinx twitch and zary are just dog shit in the early game uh i forgot lucian lucian i just remember lucian s plus tier lucian high mobility burst damage one of the strongest lane bullies uh, next to draven in the early game he's just super super good as well um yeah these champions are really good but they kind of need enchanters first of all and they need to scale three items plus lux zix and oriana can be good apcs uh if you guys need more ap damage um yeah but i think adcs hyper carries are just carrying better in the late game senna adc i think she is too scaling while not doing enough damage She's just a uh, way better support. I can close this one to be fair. Then we have pick of the patch. Yumi is still broken. I don't need... Honestly, support didn't change. Support didn't change. I don't know. I'm just repeating myself. Support just didn't change besides Zyra. Zyra got nerfed. I'm putting an S tier. She's still fine, but... She's just not as good as beforehand because she received pretty big nerfs. Yumi is broken, you guys know the reason already. Pike, you know the reason. High mobility, playmaker, Lulu, shit enchanter. Soraka, too much healing. Lux, too much damage while providing too much utility. Thresh, insane playmaker. Zyra, really good poking damage and a lot of crowd control. Good ultimate in team fights. These champions here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, they have, what do they all have in common? They are great tanks with a lot of crowd, uh, crowd control and playmaking potential. Alistair has the ultimate, the maximum super tanky, AoE knockup, Rakan, high mobility, AoE knockup and taunt, Nautilus, root, um, knockups, root, knockups, hook, Galio, AO Global Ultimate, then he has AoE Taunt, and then he has AoE Knockup, and then he has uh, Knockback. He knocks them up? Is that a knockup? We have poor. Yeah, it's Knockup. It's not Knockback, it's Knockup. Gragas has a Knockback, and Playmaking with the Ultimate. Leona, single target stun, AoE stun with the Ultimate, super tanky. Braum with a poking shield, anti poking shield, then the Ultimate for Playmaking or Disengage. Karma, very good Ultimate, uh, provides movement speed and shielding. Nami, Playmaking with the Bubble and the, um, with the Wave as well. Sona in the late game, providing a lot of healing, shielding, and the Ultimate is really good. Then we have Morgana. She is pretty shit in the laning phase, but her bind can be good. Then she has the black shield and her ultimate as well. Ash is pretty damn good in the right team comp thanks to her ultimate. Senna as a second carry on support can be also very good with the shielding. Um, yeah, with the shielding on the ultimate that she provides. Then with the root as well. Jenna pretty good peeler as well, but not as good as Nami. Uh, Set can be good with the playmaking that he provides. Then we have Shen. I just feel like Shen in the laning phase is too weak. He can be a good playmaker though with a taunt. 
Swain is too scaling in my opinion in the laning phase. Uh, he provides a decent amount of crowd control in the late game. Blitzcrank is hit or miss. Then we have Seraphine who is absolutely dog shit in the early game. But the one good ultimate can be very good in team fights. On the problem about On is he is very gold reliant and as support you don't have that much uh, gold anymore. Um, you're getting less assist gold as well on support. So supports overall got nerfed by the way with the support item nerf plus also with the assist gold nerf. Uh, also on like I said very gold item reliant so he is not as tanky as a baron lane on. But yeah, he can provide a decent amount of crowd control. But yeah, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this tier list. The major changes are obviously for the Baron lane. Uh, as I said, with Hearthsteel, Titanic Hydra, and also Bruiser, Bruiser's with Shoujin. And then we have Syndra getting released. Syndra is actually very, very good. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this tier list. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Write down below in the comments your opinion about the tier list and about the items and about changes and what you guys think about the patch. I see you guys. Bye bye. Fire spreading all around my room. My world's so bright, it's hard to breathe, but that's alright.